Hello and welcome back to some fossils. This is Glenn and in today's video we're looking at some fossils called Lycoptera. So I've actually put this name upside down. Uh, but the fish, well, if you wanted to look at the fish that way with the tail facing upwards, it's nice. But to get a full appreciation, you need to turn it around. So these are fossils from the Jihol Biota in China, in Liaoning. And that province is close to North Korea, so that's where you can actually find these fossils. These are supposedly come from the Xin, Xinian Formation. And these are Lycoptera davidi, who was uh, described by Savage in 1880. So he actually gave a description, and when they give a the description, they give a information about the skull, the vertebrae, and also the tail fins, the number of bones and tail fins. They just give a lot of information. So they're pretty much just describing what they see. So as you can see, we have the head here. Then we have the pelvis fins this is the anal fin here and in between we have another fin so that's probably the belly fin and if you look up the top we don't have a first dorsal fin we have a second one so on this one that's pretty much the dorsal fin and then we have the fin rays caudal fin rays so this is the tail and you can see the vertebrae the round nodules there. A lot of them have been displaced, so they've been pushed onto this side. And that's because of pressure. So the pressure of the matrix is this way. So you've got top pressure and bottom pressure. So I'm not too sure if this was layered that way or if this is the upside down piece. It could be either one, but it doesn't matter. The pressure uh, will be a bit different, usually uh, depending on how much sediment was placed on top. So these are from the lower Cretaceous, so 125 to 135 million years ago. And they are very common. So here we have the head, but the head is not really that distinct in this specimen, but the vertebrae is and then you've got the ribs so you've got the ribs going along there a lot of rib cages and sometimes you can see the internal organs so this one i can't uh, and also on good specimens you can see uh the scales so that will probably be on the other side of this specimen when it was found but they probably sell them separate so here we have a head. Here we have the eye socket. It looks like the eye socket was big. Uh, the mandible was there. So we had the dentary. It looks pretty small. So if we just zoom in. Yeah, it's pretty hard to see the mandary. Uh, the dentary, shall I say. Then we have... The gill placent is around, around here. So this skull, while basics anatomy you can see, you can't really see that much in the anatomy, but the ribs, so you can see the vertebrae, this vert fish has been snapped in half. So the vertebrae stops there and it restarts there, so this has been displaced. Then you've got the ribs, then you've got the fins as well, and I don't see a first dorsal fin I just see the last dorsal fin so that is a lot better detail and this one was broken in half and on the bottom we don't find any fossils so I've got the other piece here so that's good if you've got these and they're quite thick then you can break them in half and see if there's another fossil underneath or, if you wanted to look for a fossil, you can see uh, 
you need to look for dark matrix because you've got laminations in between. So I don't see any dark matrix there. Maybe there could be a fossil in this part here that's been broken in half. But that's how you look for fossils in this matrix. See if there's any actually any dark stains. Could be a fossil, could not be. So this one is a larger specimen. So you can see the eye quite clearly here. Uh, it is, if you want it, the upright position. So you've got the eye. The amanda will be somewhere down there. And here we have apple bones. So that's probably the upper call. Uh, into upper, <laughs> into upper as well. Uh, but it's hard to see a lot of detail. And the vertebrae starts up here. Then you have the pleural ribs around here and the abdominal vertebrae is pretty much part of the pleural rib so at all not as advanced as current fish so and as you can see i have no first dorsal fin i just have the last one so this these only have one fin and then we have matrix here, so if I wanted to remove that matrix to reveal the actual tail, uh, it would be good, but I'm not going to do that because I'll probably damage it. And underneath here, it looks like there might be another fossil. So this one looks like it's been broken and put back together. Or maybe not put back together, but it's just been broken. Because uh, there's a lack of removal of the matrix here. So that's a nice one. And the last one I got is pretty much broken in half. But it's a nice specimen. It's got the top part. Uh, this is the top part, then the bottom, which is broken. And we have the tail. So if we look at the head, because the head contains so many bones, they are pretty hard to fossilize. Indistinct pieces, uh, so you'd need a mo to put this under a microscope to actually reveal different types of bones because a lot of them are actually quite small. So you've got the parietal should be up there. So the eye socket is in the front. It seemed to be quite large for this animal, and this animal is supposed to be like a common minnow. And if we put it back together, oh, that's a pity. So something like that. But if you look at the matrix, I don't think there's any other fossils in this slab. So these fish were... Okay. So here we have some basic information about these fossil fish. So we have... The formation, so this is most likely the formation that this species come in. Uh, this is the earlier formation, the, lay last, <laughs> the later formation is the Jiu Fa Teng formation. Lower Cretaceans, it's in the Huang Bangi Valley in Baipao in China. It is a wetland with many fresh lakes so it's uh probably shallow lakes uh, it's a lager statin so that means the fossils are preserved quite well and these are found also with fossils of a lot of our um, birds pterosaurs uh, dinosaurs uh, uh, other types of species of fish a lot of insects and also plants as well so that's why it is a lager statin Stetton. Uh, it contains a lot of other fossils that also can preserve a lot of other details like internal organs, uh, fine detail of the skin and other things like that. Uh, so you got feathered dinosaurs. So this is where we have made a very distinct connection between birds and feathered dinosaurs is in these Chinese fossil locations. Okay, it's a Lucrestine shale. 
found in large con so the fish is found in large congregations, gregarious in life. So they are not solitary animals and in shoals. Mm. So if you see a video where uh, like tuna, they like to swim together in large pools because there's a lot of predators and that would protect them from those predators for the most part. Okay, and that's all this genera. Lycoptera is also found in Korea, Mongolia and Siberia. So it's pretty much over a lot of eastern China. And the only part of the anatomy I've found so far is uh, numerous teeth. So I'm not too sure how many teeth they do have. Uh, and it feeds on plankton or small invertebrates. So probably insects. If it has small conical teeth. If it was to be shellfish, it would need to be... It'd need a lot stronger jaw and uh, not pointy teeth. It's really not useful for shellfish. Okay, resembles common minnow and this is the species name. Uh, scales are usually 1.2 millimeters across, so very small. Okay, so we also have the geology. So there is a layer of tephra and also sandstone, so in between. And this is how they get the age, is from the tephra, so the volcanic ash, pro class volcanics. You do get a lot of uh, volcanic bombs larger rocks but you know they probably wouldn't really occur and the volcanics apparently come from the west i'm not too sure where in the west the volcanics is uh, those volcanoes could probably have been eroded by now there might be some remnants of them like in uh we have in Eastern Victoria, we do have remnants of uh, volcanic flows from 300 million years ago. And the rainfall was seasonal between semi-arid, so it's more likely in the summer, and mesic, so it's probably in the winter. Temperate climate, so they do have seasons. In Melbourne, we have a temperate climate, in which we have a distinct summer and winter season, so that's more likely what it's going to be. And it rains a lot more in winter here than it does in summer. So that's the geological and uh, just basic information of the actual species. So if you wanted to get the anatomy of a fish, here we have a tuna. Uh, it's more derived. So the a lot of the anatomy that is present in these fossils would not be present in this fish. Uh, so we do have, we don't have the dorsal fin, the first one. We have the second one. And if we look at the vertebrae, the vertebrae should be pretty much the same. But we don't have this part here. So this is a, like a, so here we have the abdominal vertebrae, the pleural ribs. And these vertebrae are more complicated than the vertebrae of this fish so, and these vertebrae that start up here are actually a lot smaller in this fish and then you've got a looks like a more complicated tail than we have here but you know this is just the basics uh, for every species, you would have to learn a different type of their anatomy. And if we go to information about this, so you get a lot of pictures. Uh, here we have, uh, so we have a, looks like a dinosaur, another dinosaur, fish, fish. This looks like a ribs, I'm not too sure what those are. Uh, insects, that's probably the leg of the insect. But you get a lot of different information. But what you need to look at is the scientific papers. So we've got PNAS. This gives the age constraint. You're using uranium lead. So uranium, because it's radioactive and it 
does lose neutrons and protons, it changes into another element. And the last, uh, last reduction in that series is lead. So it's a ratio between uranium and lead. And then we've got, you know, distinction. Then we've got some more. G hole biota, Cretaceous, terrestrial, Lagacete. So there's a lot of information that I'm going to look at soon. So if we look at one, Science Direct. A lot of these you need to purchase. Uh, it's like 30 or $40. Okay, for nearly 90 years, has been extensively used and is well known today, largely thanks to the discovery of feathered dinosaurs, angiosperms, so they're flowering plants. So the first flowering plants, I believe, come from this location. Numerous other exceptionally well uh, preserved fossils from the lower Cretaceous and the West East in China. Ironically, however, ever, what exactly the Ji Ho Boat represents in how it is defined has hardly been discussed. Okay, so they're trying to put uh, a definition of um, this biota. And they've got lots of information. But, you know, you need to pay for it. Then we have this paper that you can actually read for free. So you can download it. You don't have to pay for anything. But you can also just read about it in... Yeah, so here we have the fossil site, so there's quite a lot, and here's Beijing, the capital, North Korea is here, uh, so this fossil formation is more likely, it's supposed to be in North Korea as well, and if we go down, there's a lot more information if you want to read this paper, uh, just look up, G-hole, whatever, so then we have some, so we've got a tail feather from Synopsoteryx, so a bird or a dinosaur, flight feathers of Confuciusonus, so that's that one, skin of a lizard, Neoshusaurus, and the eyes of a lamprey self, primitive Fish, meso, myosin. Uh, oh, no, lampreys are not fish, they're lampreys. And here we have some more fossils. So it's quite interesting. Uh, this one definitely is a good read. And here we have a pterodactyl pterosaur, so that's B. So it's an embryo, an egg. What's the first one is... Another embryo of a bird. So it's a bird. Pterosaur, they both laid eggs. And then we have ovary follicle of a another bird. And a pregnant bird. I believe that's a pregnant bird. I'm not too familiar with our species from this. Not yet, anyway. So you can get a lot of information. So, when you collect fossils, a lot of people just like to collect fossils, but, you know, I like to know where this come from, the geological information, and sometimes the anatomy as well. Uh, but a lot of the information that you can find, like, I probably can't find the original paper that described this species. And even if I did, I'm not too sure if it's in English, uh, Savage, it might be in French, because uh, in the 1880s, a lot of the papers were not published in English, they were in French and German. So anyway, thank you very much for watching my video, I hope this was informative, and uh, let me know how I can improve these. Thank you and goodbye.